Ich möchte Sie ganz herzlich begrüßen zu unserem heutigen MMK-Talk mit William Forsyth, den wir im Rahmen seiner Ausstellung The Fact of Matter im Museum für Moderne Kunst heute veranstalten. Und wir freuen uns wirklich sehr, lieber Bill, dass du nochmal gekommen bist. Aus äh, USA ist er heute nochmal extra angereist für diesen Talk. Wir wissen das wirklich sehr, sehr zu schätzen. Vielen, vielen Dank. Den heutigen Talk wird Mario Kramer führen. Er ist Sammlungsleiter hier im Museum und er hat die Ausstellung mit äh, William Forsyth in äh, einer sehr langen und intensiven Vorbereitungszeit erarbeitet. Keiner kennt im Moment die Ausstellung und die Gedanken, die hinter dieser Ausstellung stecken, besser als er. Es gebe keinen geeigneteren Gesprächspartner heute als dich, lieber Mario. Ich werde das Wort... Ich werde das Wort gleich äh, an die beiden Herren übergeben. Ich möchte mich aber an dieser Stelle noch mal sehr, sehr herzlich bedanken bei der Deutsche Bank Stiftung, die uns nun seit sechs Jahren unterstützt. Hier nur durch die Förderung durch die Deutsche Bank Stiftung können wir diese Reihe der MMK Talks überhaupt realisieren. Das ist jetzt schon im sechsten Jahr so und wir wurden auch oder uns wurde auch eine Förderung für das nächste Jahr bereits zugesagt. Also falls jemand heute hier ist von der Deutschen Bank Stiftung, ganz, ganz herzlichen Dank für diese Unterstützung. Und ich übergebe das Wort und wünsche Ihnen einen spannenden Abend. Ja, ganz herzlich willkommen auch von meiner Seite. Ganz kurz zum Ablauf des heutigen Abends. Ich werde sehr kurz äh, noch mal William Forsyth natürlich vorstellen, obwohl ich glaube, dass die meisten von Ihnen natürlich William Forsyth und vor allem sein Werk hier in Frankfurt der letzten 30 Jahre sehr gut kennengelernt haben. Dann wollen wir eine Art Parcours mit Ihnen unternehmen in einem Gespräch anhand von ein paar Abbildungen dieser Ausstellung, denn wir haben diese Ausstellung nicht nur als eine klassische Ausstellung angelegt, sondern wir sehen in dieser Raumfolge vor allem einen Parcours, der, in dem diese Werke sehr dicht aufeinander abgestimmt sind, sowohl die Werke der sogenannten Choreographic Objects von William Forsyth als auch die Werke unserer Sammlung. Ich werde dann nachher aber noch darauf zu sprechen kommen, auf diesen ganz besonderen Werkdialog. Und das versuchen wir so in einer Stunde ungefähr mit Ihnen es gibt dann ein paar Force Ritt, nennt man sowas, glaube ich. Wir müssen vielleicht auch das eine oder andere überspringen, das werden wir dann spontan entscheiden. Und anschließend soll natürlich auch die Gelegenheit sein für Fragen an William Forsyth. Er hat sich bereit erklärt, auch Fragen anschließend zu beantworten. Ich würde meine Einführung ganz kurz auf Deutsch machen. Nachher wechseln wir natürlich dann auf Englisch. Wir können beides sprechen. Also, wer, also, wer hier spricht kein Deutsch? Who doesn't speak German? No, we will. We will. A minority. Wer hier spricht kein Englisch? Alle sprechen Englisch. Yeah, yeah, we will switch wow. in English. Das Bildungssystem ist noch intakt. We will, we will switch in English. Ich mache es sehr kurz. William Forsyth ist seit nunmehr über 45 Jahre als Choreograf tätig. Seine Werke sind dafür bekannt, die Praxis des Balletts aus der Identifikation mit dem klassischen Repertoire gelöst und zu einer dynamischen Kunstform des 21. Jahrhunderts transformiert zu haben. Forsyths tiefgreifendes Interesse an organisatorischen Grundprinzipien hat ihn dazu geführt, ein breites Spektrum von Projekten in den Bereichen Installation, Film und internetbasierte Wissensentwicklung zu realisieren. Aufgewachsen in New York City tanzte er zunächst mit dem Geoffrey Ballet und ab 1973 mit dem Stuttgarter Ballett, dessen Hauschoreograf er 1976 wurde. 
1984, das ist ein sehr entscheidendes Jahr für uns alle, begann seine 20-jährige Tätigkeit als Direktor des Ballett Frankfurts hier in Frankfurt mit mittlerweile legendären Werken wie Artifact, The Loss of Small Details oder Kammer Kammer, um nur einige Werke zu nennen. Nach der Auflösung des Ballett Frankfurts im Jahr 2004 formierte er ein neues Ensemble, The Forsyth Company, die er von 2005 bis 2015 leitete. In dieser Ära entstanden Werke wie Three Atmospheric Studies, Human Rights oder CIDR. William Forsyth wurde mit zahlreichen internationalen Preisen ausgezeichnet, unter anderem, ich kann da auch nur eine Auswahl natürlich davon nennen, den New Yorker Tanz und Performance Bessie Award, diesen dann aber gleich mehrfach, den Lawrence Olivier Award der Stadt London, den Hessischen Kulturpreis, das Bundesverdienstkreuz, den Kommandeur des Arts des Lettres des Fran oh, der französischen Regierung, den Wexner Preis und schließlich den Goldenen Löwen für sein Lebenswerk auf der Biennale in Venedig im Jahr 2010. Forsyth ist Ehrenmitglied äh, des Laban Center for Movement and Dance in London und Ehrendoktor der Juilliard School in New York. Forsyth hat ganz aktuell eine Professur an der University of Southern California, Gloria Kaufman School of Dance inne und seit 2015 ist William Forsyth zudem als Choreograf Associé des Ballett der Pariser Oper tätig, wo er als Mentor mit angehenden Choreografen arbeitet. Seine Performance-, Video- und Rauminstallationen wurden bereits in zahlreichen Museen weltweit gezeigt, unter anderem anlässlich der Whitney Biennale in New York, in der Tate Modern in London und auch im MoMA in New York oder der Venedig Biennale, auch da mit mehrmaliger Beteiligung. Für das kommende Jahr, das sei vielleicht noch als letztes erwähnt, erarbeitet er ein neues Ballett für die Pariser Oper. Vielleicht sollten Sie schon mal einen Zug buchen. Und im März 2016 wird er an der Biennale in Sydney beteiligt sein. Dear Bill, we are very honored to have you here tonight. Thank you. Very, very welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, let's start with our images and our little tour. Uh, just a little pre words. Uh, when we started our project uh, three years ago, uh, yeah, what you see tonight and what you have seen in this exhibition is the result of this three-year wonderful collaboration. Uh, we had, first of all, two things in mind. Uh, on one hand, this brilliant architecture by Hans Hollein, which gave us a kind of yeah, support and frame. A lot of support, yeah. Enormous support for our work and especially for your site-specific installations. And the other point was the dialogue with our collection. collection. And uh, even for me as a head of the collection since 25 years, it was very challenging and sometimes extremely surprising uh, what we found out and uh, what we combined, finally, yeah. and this will be the theme of our evening tonight. There are general aspects in the work of William Forsyth and in the works of our collection as well, just to name the line, movement, sound, composition structures, and performative aspects which you can find, of course, in his work, but in so many works of the MMK collection as well. I would like to describe this exhibition, a museum in motion, of course, temporary. And um, I think you invented uh, this 
word, choreographic object, already 20 years ago. But maybe with this exhibition, we really have a new term in art history. So maybe we can start to talk a little bit. That would be great to hear from you. How you came got, how, how, how you came to this yeah. word, the choreographic object. Okay. Um, I think I'm someone who likes to take things apart. <laughs> um, my mother tells a story that once she left me in the bathtub when I was very young, and she came back and all the armature and everything was disassembled. <laughs> everything, the entire bathtub. And I think that I've sort of stayed on that path for the last 60 some odd years. Yeah? So um, I'm intrigued um, by the parts of things. Not so much the whole thing, but rather what things are made of. Um, for example, um, I'm teaching at a university now in California, and I am basically teaching movement analysis. So I think that is pretty much sums up what I'm interested in. I'm interested in analysis, um, finding out what the parts of things are, and then and then, what's this made of? <laughs> um, and um, looking at the parts, figuring out what the parts are, and then try, and then try us. Oops, maybe try this. Try yours. Uh, yeah, sure. And then trying to find a context for the parts. Yeah. So um, when, for example, you have what I call now a choreographic object, it was certainly not attempt certain, oh, we're, we're losing everything. <laughs> I'm in theater, I can speak loud. Okay, <laughs> nee, this is, uh, no, this is not loud enough. Uh, I'm, yeah, it's okay, I can, I mean, I, I'm used to yelling at large rooms full of people all day, yeah, <laughs> so this is not hard. Um, so, um, the choreographic objects, were not destined for museums originally. I did not think that they would have anything to do with the visual arts world. Um, you've been very kind. The visual arts world, Algemein, has adopted me, which is very kind of you. We'll see how long you let me stay there. <laughs> but right now it's okay. <laughs> but um, I, I'm not interested so much in putting choreography in museums. That's really not interesting for me, personally, for other people it is. Um, but I'm interested in isolating phenomena, yeah, phenomena. And this is, these, it seems that the, these objects or devices, whatever you want to call them, are there to show an, a, a general public, uh, not a Fachpublikum, yeah, mm -hmm. Uh, not a specialized public, how things are made, what they're made up of. You see a big dance work, uh, for example, big ballet or big dance work plays on stage, it's only some movement. It's not every movement available to a human being. Yeah? And so choreographers have to make selections. It's very important. We look at very small parts of things and we try to create a discourse with the simplest means possible. So the choreographic object sim simply allows us to discuss very small parts of building blocks, let's say, without having an expert in between the public and the receiver. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we just start with the first Space. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. So the city of abstracts, uh, a fantastic first moment uh, yeah. when so, the audience comes in. So the question is, you <laughs> ask yourself, what's between you and the picture you're producing? And you don't know what you can produce, yeah? 
But if you look around, you assume that something perhaps more complex is available. And so you investigate actually an algorithm. Yeah. The algorithm says if the image comes in, it gets distributed one line at a time. Normal, normally with a fernseher, alle Linien kommen zugleich, ja? Auf dem Bildschirm, baff, ja? Aber diese, in diesem Fall, die fangen unten an und gehen langsam nach oben. Aber bis man das, wie sagt man, voll ausnutzt, muss man ein bisschen bewegen. Man bewegt, um was zu wissen, um was zu verstehen. Und das ist der Hauptpunkt, das Ganze, ja? Das würde ich sagen, die ganze Ausstellung. Man muss bewegen, um Wissen zu akquirieren und to have some knowledge. Yeah. Uh, the original idea was a public space. Es uh, war ein öffentlicher Raum in Frankfurt. In English, we have to oh, switch sorry, in English. English. Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It was a public room in Frankfurt. Uh, uh, space. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Haltestelle. Bookteilstelle. Ja, ja. We can speak German? Yeah, we can speak oh, German, okay. of course. We can switch. <laughs> okay, we go on. Mit Überzeugung. So, ah. With conviction. Maybe hold it higher up. Hold it. Uh, no, it's there. Oh, it's right there. Okay, um, hier ist ein anderer Raum, <lacht> in diese Richtung, und es ist ein kleiner Raum mit einem Film drin. Ah, there it is. Okay. Ja, Stellen, Stellen, Films was our first uh, collaboration in the Zollamt. Ja. It's our floor. Ja, das ist And uh, that was fun to do. And uh, yeah, there is a totally different moment than the city of abstract, this moment of deceleration. Yeah, also compression. Um, compression. Yeah, in these, yeah, oh, sorry, English, right. Okay, <laughs> so um, uh, all the elements that you normally associate with choreography, uh, development over time, the use of space, relationships uh, in space, so im Raum, alles ist komprimiert, alles ist, has collapsed, sorry, everything has collapsed mm -hmm. into a kind of singularity and there are only very small changes. Um, what I tried to do was to make an entanglement, so ein... Uh, Verknotung. Ja, Verknotung, es gibt ein anderes Wort auch. Also Verwicklung. Verwicklung oder Verknöllung, wie sagt man denn? You know, when it's all messed up. Mm -hmm. Wie bei Garn. Wie, Knoid, what? Knoid. Yeah, Knoid. Genau. Genau. And um, so it was hard to identify which lead, which limb belonged to whom. Yeah. And uh, this is actually not from the film. Net, it was not from the film. Bit, weil wir haben die Sachen in dem Film, haben wir die Sachen gewechselt. <laughs> uh, ja, ein, eine, eine, so jeweils, sie haben jeweils eine graue Sache und ein Barfuß. They each have one barefoot and one uh, gray sock um, in the film, yeah? and which makes for more confusion. And uh, the reason there's two films is that I want you to not be sure if it's the same thing. I want you to be actually choreographically, I want you to do this. <laughs> so I've created a very, very small movement which you are completely unaware of. Yeah? In the first, in City of Abstracts, you're moving around, some people are dancing excessively, I heard. <laughs> yeah? um, it's not really a place, City of Abstracts is a, not a place for self-expression, I feel. But apparently, that's not everyone's <laughs> opinion. Um, I'm interested in you in investigating uh, how it works. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. And the same thing here is I'm interested in the film. It's a much more confusing picture. Um, I'm interested in you trying to figure out how it works. 
Yeah? Um, I'm very happy with the work that is opposite from Jens Leisch. Um, yeah, look, mm. okay. The um, first piece he fell in love from the collection. The, the thematic of, of a Seil or a Seiden, Seiden, Seiden uh, Garn. Garn. Uh, this is ein Kilometer Seidengarn über drei Jahre verknotet. So, sorry, it's, uh, so it's four, years. Yeah. four years. Was it four, four years? years? Okay, so it's a single kilometer of thread that has been knotted for four years by Jens. Yeah, and I think that is an extraordinary also collapse of time mm. into an object. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think that there are not so many things like this in the world. Mm -hmm. It's a very, you, you know what I mean? <laughs> you think about it. I, 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 and it takes on properties of, of something from a different species. It looks like <laughs> coral or something. But in any case, I thought that that was, uh, I was very lucky to have this object next to the, the knot of the dancers. It was a, a tremendous gift from the mm. collection itself. Mm. Yeah. And I think it's a, a wonderful situation that the whole piece is just big like your hand. Yeah, yeah. It has a proportion of your hand. Yes. Also, there's a number of, of um, moments in this exhibition where the, the line, this well, idea of, of a line comes up quite significantly. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Yeah. Ah. yeah, here we are. So this would be a nice example uh, for the parkour. Yes. How how art space by art, space how art follow can knock each other knock you out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A kind of enactment and exhibition at the same time. It's I think it's the most specifically choreographic work of the whole <laughs> exhibition. Uh, it really is. Um, sometimes it is done by a, a, a statist or a performer, mm -hmm. and sometimes it's not. I was today with um, uh, uh, a doctor, and I said, can you guess if it's a real person or not? And her, she started immediately calculating, going, no, no, no. no. <laughs> It's not. <laughs> it's like, not. Okay, good. <laughs> but um, I, I, the fact that it, it is specifically horizontal, and again, it's on the floor, mm -hmm. as was the Stellen Stellen, they're Stellen, on Stellen, the Bobby. floor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we'll be talking about things that are on the floor, horizontal. You'll see the same horizontal, uh, horizontality in Santiago Sierra. Sierra upstairs and in Teresa Margulis in her film also. This idea of, of a lying body. Classic art subject, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is the title of the whole show. This piece <laughs> gives the title of our exhibition, The Fact of Matter. And this is maybe the most uh, special piece in the whole exhibition for this, our audience. Yeah, this piece tells you a lot of The piece um, tells you a lot about yourself. <laughs> mm. um, the piece is not to be looked at. If you look at it, you're not really getting anything from it. It looks nice, it looks, um, but nice is not enough, right? So um, uh, in order to know the piece, you have to try what it suggests, but if you try it, you will know something about yourself that maybe you didn't want to know. <laughs> And that would be that you are, A, not so light, yeah? <laughs> B, not so strong. C, not so coordinated. <laughs> so that's the fact, yeah? Or those are the three facts, yeah? Um, naturally, The body is not made for this environment, but if we don't take the body out of its normal environment, we might have difficulty knowing ourselves that way. Okay? So, um, I suggest you try it, even if you don't succeed in getting through. Um, very few of you will. 
but just try a bit and discover those three things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the next yeah. space uh, yeah. <laughs> is the next uh, performance for the audience. Yeah, I mean, um, this is a, a, some, some, a place where it is not possible for certain classes of action to arise. So the volume, will f I speak of the volume beneath the volume, not of the volume above. Um, at one point, I wanted to make it as high as a tsark, you know, as a casket. But I thought I would over-determine the subject of the main floor. But ideally, I think next time, I will make it lower. <laughs> um, uh, uh, just so that it becomes, a, a, I think, a little bit more apparent um, how much you take the space that you normally have for your action for granted, yeah? And I mean that also in a political sense. I mean that where we are living, and in light of many events right now, we take much for granted, and we don't know how long for, uh, we will be able to take everything for granted. And I think I'm perfectly happy having this room work mm -hmm. metaphorically for a number of reasons, yeah, mm -hmm. like that. So yeah, this is, yeah, uh, uh, you could say a volume, it could be a political space within which it is not possible for certain classes of action to arise. Mm -hmm. You could change a volume out, yeah. Das Wort Volume ist austauschbar, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah in one of our uh, tours, uh, you talked about the pressure on our human existence. Also, yeah, I don't, yeah, I, I don't want to dramatize I it. don't want yeah. to, but... Yeah. I, I just think that... I was surprised yeah. that something, something came out like that. Ich finde, dass die, die Selbstverständlichkeit, so whatever is the, the, the self-evidence mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, of our body's abilities that is put into question by the rings is also put into question here. There's some mm -hmm. things that, we, that are just, we think, are self-evident. Mm -hmm. yeah. Un, unimpeded motion. Unimpeded motion. We live in a society where we assume we have unimpeded motion, but not everyone has unimpeded motion, mm -hmm. as we see right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe I have to be more sensible with these yeah, things. Yeah, you do. Okay. <laughs> so, next space is also a site specific installation in our museum by Andreas Luminski. Uh, I always describe it as a static action. And you know that it's very important that this trap has to be active. Yeah. And I think ich everyone hab, can feel it intuitively. Ich, I'm afraid by the, the, the Wächter, manchmal mm -hmm. die sagen nix. I know, and I'm like, whoa, yeah, watch Yeah, it's out. not so yeah, easy, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah, in I, some space, something is allowed. In other space, yeah, nothing is yeah. allowed. So it's that actually is not dangerous. So, uh, it's not so dangerous. easy to deal with. Yeah, it's a dangerous thing. In the Daily thing. Museum. Yeah. Yeah, and what you uh, talked before um, comes close, I think, with this atmosphere of a prison or a torture or whatever you feel in this. Maybe you get say it's an abgrenzung. I will not dramatize it. Oh, sorry, an abgrenzung. What is an abgrenzung? <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, a limitation. A limitation. Yeah. A limitation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a border. A kind of. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, a dead end, it's also. Of course. Yeah. But yeah. It's also uh, obvious that the trap is not only for wild boar, uh -huh. it's also for the museum visitor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. Here we go. Yeah, two words diagnostic gaze. Yes. It's a quite surprising piece in the. Second moment. <laughs> in the second moment. Um, <laughs> es ist uh, ein, ein, entweder ein Beweis, dass man lebt English? oder English? dass man stirbt. <laughs> Gerade. English. Oh, sorry, sorry. Um, uh, it it's, um, provides evidence that either you are very healthy and alive or that you're not so healthy and you're going to die fairly soon. Okay? So, um, uh, when you hold it, you assume that the tremblings could perhaps be controlled. For a small period of time, you assume you have uh, 
power over your mortality and that you can control your body, whereas in fact you cannot. And your body will do with you what it will. <laughs> yeah. So, and, but you better be nice to your body because you're both going to go into that box together. Okay, so be very good to your body. Yeah. And in this case, yeah. we found another perfect dialogue uh, yes. for you. It's a very a fragile moment. A very fragile moment very. with a photo from 1949 here in Frankfurt uh, where the Camilla Meyer Hochseil Truppe, circus artists, performed above the ruins of Frankfurt. That's a spectacular picture. I, I love it. It's, it's very, very moving. Uh, that humanity and is not to be you know, suppressed. That it, it lives. And, the, and it's, it's, a, it's about like balance. balance. Yes, about balance. Yes, yes, about balance, exactly. Yeah. Very hopeful. Yeah, another piece from the collection we selected, the High Energy Bar, a wonderful title. Maybe... Yeah, yeah. well, uh, Walter DiMario saw this as a, kind of like a baton you pass in a race. Yeah, it's one thing you give over to the next. It's energy you give over. He, Walter DiMario won't let you run a race with this piece for some reason. <laughs> I find it kind of ironic that it's stuck in a box. Do you know what I mean? It's, where it's something that's meant to be handled. How do you feel about that? I, it makes, I, I, you know what I mean? Es ist stillgelegt, we say in German. <laughs> <laughs> Now, yeah, the, the second concept was that uh, you could add these multiple right. end to end to an end, or more or less endless line. So it would be a linear sculpture mm, in mm, his mm. ideas of the 60s, of land art, and all what he did in the 60s. And so you have both. You have this performance aspect and you have the linear sculpture aspect, aspect yes. both. Yeah, I just find the title ironic because it's been, it's now low energy. It's the potential. Energy bar. <laughs> potential. Potential. Absolutely. energy. Potential. Uh, yeah, another work uh, which became very, very important for you. Uh, I developed that you were really touched and uh, suddenly you mentioned, wow, this is a key piece from your collection. Absolutely. I think that was the first piece I chose. We, we selected. Yeah, yeah it yeah. was the first piece. Um, here you have a choreographic object par excellence. Um, the work itself induces, um, uh, how do you say, an intention from you, a physical intention. You walk in, you understand what's happening, and you decide what you do then. Yeah? Your action then is up to you. I breathe deeply when I'm in there. Uh, I think it's a... Um, does everyone know how this piece works? That there is water from corpses that have been washed in the, in the humidifiers in the room. And I think of it as a kind of privilege to carry these people around with me in my life. They're, they're, once I breathe them in, they're incorporated into my body. Yeah, I, I'm, they and I are one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm very, very, I'm, I'm honored somehow. I think other people could see it more um, dramatically and think, oh, uh, molecules that have touched a dead body. I personally don't find it dramatic. I find it kind of wonderful. Um, having had family members who have died and it's kind of the most amazing thing in the world is to experience that transition from life to death. And I think it's, it's, it's magical in, in this work in some way. It's, it's a wonderful, wonderful piece. Yeah. It's a kind of embodiment of the past mm -hmm. uh, Nicely human said. life. Nicely said. Mm -hmm. And, of course, it's about mortality. So the first floor is. has a very strong theme, yeah. you can say. I thought there was a very funny moment um, in Robert Barry's piece. Um, This is next, I think. Oh, yeah. no, we will talk yeah. later. later. Robert... We will see it later. Oh, we'll see it later? We okay. will see it later. Because I, I, can, I can mention it now. <laughs> There's two tiny, um, what do you call them, Leinwände, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Two, two tiny um, paintings. They're like little strips 
And you're supposed to, the, the choreography is this, they're on the wall, in the center of the wall, and you take a step and you hold out your arm. Okay, so the choreographic object uh, induces this motion. And I kept thinking of Christ. <laughs> so we really had the, 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 the sort of mortality moment right there. Yeah. <laughs> So, in a very minimal piece, yeah, very minimally, <laughs> would not expect. <laughs> minimally Christian. Yeah, another work in the second floor, Additive in Verse, one of my favorite pieces in this exhibition. Well, we have three works that are concerned with the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. We have Margulis, mm -hmm. we have uh, Namjoon Pike, mm -hmm. and, and myself. Yeah. Yeah. Three atmospheric works. Yeah. Yeah. Sculpture, drawing, film, you cannot split up anymore what you are talking about. Yeah. Um, well, in, in that, on that floor, there are certain examples of line or plane, so fläche, yeah, or a line that um, transforms into a volume or umgekehrt, yeah. This is three one pixel wide circles that have been projected over each other um, to form, so it's actually a, a video drawing on the floor that produces the illusion of a volume, so an object that's not there. Um, with um, immaterial uh, form. It's an immaterial form, yeah. And then we have the choreography is that this particular work, if the Zuschauer, if the public moves too fast, it disappears. Disappear. It becomes so disturbed that you actually only have a video on a, on a, wet, a wet white floor and the object itself completely goes away. So the work demands that you change how you move. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you don't have to adhere to the rules, but if you do adhere, you will have something quite unusual. I like. Uh, uh, whoops. Uh, we come to next, yeah. yeah. Twilight Arc. Twilight Arc. Terrell. Terrell is also, a, a, in that case, a fläche that becomes a volume. Here we see yeah. it. Yeah. This looks like uh, a two dimensional object but it is actually a three-dimensional object. In my case, it was a two-dimensional object that looked like a three-dimensional object. So there was this kind of nice little dialogue there. But yeah. you have a very similar experience, which is a bodily vision. Yeah, yeah. You're, well, here you have to work. Absolutely, yeah. and you need time. Yes, yes, you do, you need time. In mine, you need to take time, mm -hmm. yeah, and you have to work not to go into your habitual movement yeah, you don't want to move like you always move. You don't want to rush around. Yeah, um, people though do not. Uh, m in my experience, people are not happy moving slowly in a museum. <laughs> What's wrong with you all? It's like <clears throat> everyone wants to quickly see it and and go. And you're like slow down. Yeah. Yeah, and very by the other audience. immaterial object, right? <laughs> uh, you construct all with your inner eye. Yeah, you can take one with you. You know that? Did you know that? You can have. Oh, you got one. Yeah. <laughs> That's Saul. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's an instruction. Instructions. Um, this um, is the same instruction that is in the film, uh, 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 the instructional mm -hmm. video. Um, where the film shows you one way of thinking about embodied geometry, which is what ballet is. Ballet is a form of inscriptive geometry, so geometry written into the body. Um, and from the first lecture, um, this is the text of the first lecture, which says, you want to do it with me? Okay. Do it. Uh, so you have um, take one hand and go point. Say point. 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 Okay. And the other hand, say point. 
Okay, guns festhalten. Yeah. Hmm. Now say line. Do you have it? <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Many lines. <laughs> okay. You now, you now own a work from me. Okay. <laughs> I should call it acquisition, right? <laughs> <laughs> Don't try to sell it. I'll find out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, okay. This is very similar to the knots with the, uh, with the two men. Um, this is only, you see only the, uh, the frames, the, <laughs> the, the frames of, of at the end motion, yeah? There's very little motion, there's 110 f frames. You say frames? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, frames, yeah. yeah. Like a film, but all motion has been subtracted, yeah? There's only these configurations, very formal. I think this is one of the most beautiful dance works I've ever seen, and I especially like it because the motion has been subtracted. And he understands uh, um, everything about choreography on mm -hmm. some level. So we normally assume choreography has motion, but that's just an assumption we make, mm -hmm. and that's why um, we have uh, Marcel Duchamp mm -hmm. in the exhibition, because he attacks Next. or enlightens us about our assumptions, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, about what constitutes certain classes of cultural artifacts, I would mm -hmm. say, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or yeah, art, the, artwork, artwork too. Yeah. In the case of uh, Santiago Sierra, I think it's important that we are not talking about dancers, we are talking about workers, and uh, we are talking about uh, workforce. Yes, and, and he's talking about a social space. Right, and this, this work is the subject on that floor. So exactly. the second floor, the subject is more or less work, I material and immaterial work. Yeah. Here's my favorite piece of choreography. Um, the, it's the, the most important piece of choreography in the early 20th century. Um, it's the first, um, uh, what do you call that? Um, instructional piece, yeah. Uh, um, the, uh, uh, Duchamp asked, said, uh, you take a meter of string and you hold it one meter over the floor and Drop when it. it's dropped, yeah, and notice that like point, point line, the, in this case the choreography is, okay. so it's the, it's the Skagentide. It's the opposite. You open your fingers and not close them. And he said that is another, another meter or a new meter, a new standard. A new standard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the fact is this string is still one meter long. It didn't change, yeah? Except we had assumed that meters are straight lines or maintain the property of straightness. Mm -hmm. These in gerade. Mm -hmm. And that's just an assumption we make about meters, standards, mm -hmm. yeah. So that's what I like about he, he makes us... <laughs> it's loud. We assume microphones are for transmitting, they're oh, not. It's interesting, yeah. yeah, how the microphone reacts on you. <laughs> and of course we are talking about the, I don't know if this is a right description in English, the calculated chance, can you say that in English? Because yeah. in German we say the calculierter Zufall which is a wonderful uh, uh, word. And uh, yeah, this is a foundation of the aesthetics of the chance in the 20th century. And in a tremendous influence on John Cage as an example, yeah. on Merce Cunningham. So um, without we, these yeah. trastopage et talon, yeah. uh, many things would be missing in the 20th century. I, I've spent a couple of years now talking to mathematicians and asking them if they could possibly write this event in mathematical language. Mm -hmm. And finally, the consensus was among, among the math, among. Astonishing. <laughs> We're doing this, we machen das absichtlich. Genau. The consensus was among the mathematicians. <laughs> it's very consistent. It is. I do both. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> is that... Um, I get one too. <laughs> now we're going to juggle. <laughs> okay. Try the right one. Yeah, this one's good. Yeah. Um, anyway, the consensus was that it was a statistical phenomenon, also apropos chance, yeah, mm -hmm. it had to do with statistics more than anything, anything else. But they couldn't, they couldn't write the actual act. I don't know why. They seemed all to draw a blank yeah, mm -hmm. when it came to that. Yeah, next uh, chap, we can say, was a lot of fun to do. A selection of our video collection. And we just wanted to show you some examples of this room right underneath this space. We have a bigger collection of pieces. And uh, maybe we start with incidents uh, by Svetlana and Igor Kopustiansky. Which is one of the best pieces of choreography ever to appear <laughs> in Frankfurt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's a, an amazing work uh, and their ability to isolate these phenomena. And also, if you watch the film, you'll notice how, how very carefully the morphologies and the types of motion are grouped and categorized. You'll have flipping surfaces that collapse or volumes that are pushed. And it's all the principles of classical choreography, everything you like about traditional choreography is in this film. It's so beautifully crafted and you really should try to watch the whole thing. It's a great, great piece of choreographic uh, selection. Yeah, the, yeah Lutz Momotz, the so-called soziale plastic. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> Not surprising. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A little bit the opposite because... Uh, yeah. It's also this reduction of movement. And it's about f as failure, too. About? Failure. 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 Dagen. Absolutely. It's, it's, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, do you know the story? He's been asked to keep his eyes open for 15 minutes. Try Without. It. Try it. Yeah. Um, he's very unsuccessful. <laughs> and yet you are completely convinced that he has been successful. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, another key piece in our collection by Richard Serra. Hand catching lead. Uh, could be a piece by William Forsyth, I think. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> I, should have, I should have started earlier. Uh, uh, this is awesome. It's an awesome piece. And another. Actually, Sarah piece was the first film we chose. That was, mm, that's right, I, yeah. I thought, if nothing else, then the Sarah film. Absolutely. This is... And the same year, 1968, uh, Walking Contraposto by Bruce Nauman. Spectacular. It's a really, really great film. Yeah. It's a bit like the volume, but vertical. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he used this principle also. He, he shrank the walls in... Uh, wie heißt dieser Werk? Uh, the corridor. The corridor, the green corridor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, a totally different question. Did you experience some of these early works in New York in the early 70s? Um, no, later. later. Later on. Yeah. I remember him, the one with the li walking on the, the line. In, in the line in the studio. Yeah, yeah. that was great. Stomp, stomping. Yeah, he in was. The um, floor. Nauman was connected to the Judson people. Mm -hmm. So everyone was investigating new ways to um, assemble choreographic situation mm. and he thought that was an interesting subject and I actually got to speak with him about it once. It was very cool. Mm. And I think he's one of the, again, one of the great choreographers of the 20th century. You see him as a Bildner Künstler, as a visual artist, but I see him entirely as a choreographer. He didn't make a lot of choreography, but all the choreography he made was groundbreaking. Absolutely groundbreaking, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and the last example is Teresa Magoyes again. We talked about her work before, uh, and you can see in this kind of predella image the washing of the dead uh, body and the benches, the concrete benches are casted with this The water, water. from the corpses, yeah. So.
Oh, wow, who is that? Some El kid. <laughs> a legendary solo by William Forsyth, 1997. Right. Where you, yeah, uh, was you present a wide experience of 25 years of, your, of you as a dancer and choreographer. Yeah. And you it's a compression. It it's a compression. In yeah. seven minutes. Yeah. I tried to compress all the theory um, that is in the um, instructional um, film. Um, there's 107 chapters of, of theory, actually, and mm. they're all compressed into seven minutes. And uh, that film is the reason why I like ibuprofen. You know, so. <laughs> you can't take yourself too seriously, right? <laughs> yeah. And another groundbreaking piece yeah. uh, in this context, of course, even earlier, 1994, is the lecture from Improvisation Technology. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, this is a kind of modulor of your grammar, of your choreographic method, or thinking, we can say. Uh, geometry of dance, maybe? Yeah. I don't well, know. Maybe was, you can describe it much yeah, better. It was, it was far more focused on um, literacy. What is literacy? Literacy. Also, man is entweder analphabetisch oder... Ah, okay. Uh, ein, eine... Es hat nicht, mehr, nicht gebildet, aber... Um, man kann lesen, wie sagt man? Eine Lesbarkeit. Ja, nur, dass man selbst lesen kann. Ist es an, ist es Alphabetismus? Ist das <lacht> <lacht> an Alphabetismus? <lacht> Something like Describe that. it a little bit in English again. Um, it's the ability to read. Ja? Mm. So, um, diesen alle Bewegungs- uh, 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 Kapitel, Chapters in a, uh, in a motion analysis document. Um, what's interesting about this is that it is the very first digital dance document that ever existed. And so it is um, there to be the first kind of document that proposes literacy through digital media. So dig uh, dance literacy. So being able to read a dance. Most of you don't know how to read. A, there's some people do. Some people know how to read a dance, but I would say the majority of you uh, don't have that opportunity. Yeah, mm. and here you have it. Yeah, and the kinesphere is a very important moment. The space surrounding the body. Yeah, oh, we won't. Let's go. It's too. But complicated. this is yeah, too. Yeah. too uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, one of your um, one of your favorite other pieces in the this collection. Is, this is really awesome. Sai Twombly. Yeah, yeah. Um, I like it because Sai Twombly said, and I quote Sai Twombly, is that this a line is the sensation of its own realization. Sagt man auf Deutsch? Die Linie ist der Sinneseindruck ihrer eigenen Realisierung. Yeah. Okay. And that's uh, very much like, like dancing. If you want to know about dancing, contemplate, contemplate that sentence, yeah? Yeah, so a line is a sensation of its realization. So it it's, means a combination of, of different kinds of sensory input, not just one. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I was very surprised myself because it's one of the most unusual Cy Twombly's, which is in our collection, but in this case it was the perfect Cy Twombly. Yeah, yeah, it really is. And it's also a, an, an, an illusion, a, a illusory volume there also, mm -hmm. as is Fred Sandek yeah, across nice. the room. That is a wonderful piece. It's a, a volume that doesn't exist, so to speak. It's right. not really there. It is and it isn't. Your, your eye is doing the work. Like in the James Turrell, your eye is doing the work. Yeah. And Again, yeah. another example. Yeah. Uh, Fred Sandbeck, uh, if he is talking about his work, he said, the sculptural equivalent of a number two pencil. 
number two pencil. <laughs> I always <laughs> liked this idea of the three-dimensional drawing in space. Yeah. And so, so Sandbeck is drawing three-dimensionally, and so, so were you, point, point, line. Yeah. Yeah, another chapter. Yeah, uh, with enormous effort. Uh, um, actually, I think it's gotten easier. We have to adjust it. Really? Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, Sabrina be, worked very hard. I know. <laughs> it, it used to be nearly impossible, and now it's it's too possible. Yeah. Um, uh, this is um, in order to realize the work, you have to work. In other words. Um, this is Sabrina's version of the choreography, <laughs> and each of you have a different version of the choreography. Some people ask other people to help them realize the work. Um, many people do not realize that they have performed the work at all. Um, people often uh, ignore the fact that the door is a work. <laughs> and as Duchamp suggested, Without you, the work is not complete. Absolutely. So, um, without a, a, a Zuschauer, that, or a, a spectator, a visitor, Besucher, mm -hmm. if you don't participate, the work doesn't exist at all. Yeah? Yeah. And you will miss another space. Yeah. With another instruction <laughs> about another um, behauptete, <laughs> a, 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 a is a, a, an assumed or, or a, an, an embodied standard. So uh, I don't say maintain a distance of one standard meter. I did that on purpose. Yeah. Um, it says keep a gefühlte yeah, meter mm -hmm. because we are all also shaped by the culture we live in mm -hmm. and we all sort of know what a meter, meter is. is. A meter is something you perform with your body yeah, on some level. Um, has anyone ever gone, you know, one, two to measure something yeah, like that? So um, mm. it's an example of how the world has choreographed us. Mm. Yeah. And, um, but this is a, a, a very simple, um, also a, a tip of the hat to, I would say, um, uh, Wittgenstein. No, no. Um, uh, to the Judson Church. Uh, to Two. Wittgenstein. <laughs> to? What um, to the Judson Church, this particular school okay. of, of, mm -hmm. um, of choreography which said that that suffices, that is sufficient mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for a choreographic event. And so we, if you want to look at the whole show, you could look at the whole show through this sentence. It talks about something that is perhaps or perhaps not linear mm -hmm. about something we do together and with each other. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, together is very important, I think. If you are alone in the space, it's a little bit disappointing. <laughs> but if you come with a crew, if it's you fantastic. If you come on the weekend, <laughs> it's very exciting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this was the example by Robert Berry we talked before, where the measurements of the body of William Forsyth gave the proportion of the hanging of the two small paintings. Yeah, Bruce Nauman, I think we talked about. Maybe we can skip it and go on to uh, the third floor. The next piece by William Forsyth, uh, which is maybe one of the most uh, yeah, uh, beautiful in this exhibition and most uh, People really love it. It's no question at all. They should stop yanking them uh, <laughs> down. <laughs> keep pulling them off, right? Yeah. Um, and it's maybe the choreographic, choreographic object par excellence. Yeah. Um, in this, this is this is a very different one. We've done it before in, in different configurations. Some have are not mechanized. Um, there's one in Copenhagen now that is very very tight. So that's not mechanized, um, so that you set the thing in motion. In this case, um, we composed 60 pendulums, but we composed it first as a piece of music. So all the activity of the little motors that make the pendulums work were 
made as a huge counterpoint, 60 part counterpoint, and just by accident, <laughs> the pendulums also move, yeah? You're allowed to move within the pendulums. Sometimes it's actually quite difficult. It's quite condensed and really hard not to hit the pendulums. But, um, you know, you learn a little bit something about yourself, which is, again, that you only have eyes in the front of your head, which is an interesting fact. <laughs> no? um, and uh, again, um, I, I was very surprised um, often uh, by looking at someone and re realizing I had made a prejudicial assumption by looking at their weight or size that they were not quick on their feet, whereas in fact they were <laughs> very good. <laughs> and that other people who I thought would be quick and flink and... Uh, mm -mm -mm. Yeah, some, and it's very surprising to see people's sense of space and how, di how very, very different it is, how we are not all alike. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Also for us in the museum, it was very interesting to see that some people really first watch before they enter. So they enjoy it as a kind of meditative moment. They give themselves the time to to follow these beautiful lines, like in a drawing. It's a, it's a, a, a drawing in motion, in I a way. Have, I have an anecdote. In the, we did a very, very big version in the Volkswagen Museum. Um, and we had the whole Esva. It was 40 meters long and 20 meters wide, 400 pendulums. And the director said, the bazooka haben das kaputt gemacht. <laughs> he said, he said, we shouldn't allow the visitors to go into it. I said, well, that would kind of defeat the purpose <laughs> of the whole thing. But it was, it was visually very, very nice when it was undisturbed. Yeah. I mean, you can just listen to it as a piece of music yeah? because it is composed. It's not just structured. Yeah. It's a 25-minute composition. 25-minute composition, yeah. So you are invited to take some time. Vielen, vielen Dank für Ihre große Aufmerksamkeit. Wir haben es ziemlich geschafft, den kleinen Parcours in unserer Stunde. Vielen Dank. Thank you. Okay. Natürlich, natürlich. Do you want to ask questions? We're supposed to allow you to ask questions. about the opening in Copenhagen. Um, it's called uh, you in the company of others. Like, are you satisfied with the concept and how is it working for C you? Can you talk slowly? Because it's very echoey. Okay. Because uh, the, mic the microphones are facing, uh, the loudspeakers are facing that way. I'm wondering, the opening tomorrow in Copenhagen, um, are you satisfied with the concept, you in the company of others? Am I satisfied with the what? The concept uh, of the you know, you know um, I, I, I'm going tomorrow, and I'll tell you on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, I think that it was a, a, a very lovely invitation, and I think I hope that um, that uh, my contribution is is good. Yeah, um, my contribution is called perturbation, which is uh, disturbance. Yeah, so we'll see how it works in the company of others. Yeah. I have the impression you are a kind of crossover artist. I am a I'm kind what? of crossover artist. You began with movements, with 
your body, with everything the person has by itself. Now you change something like an imagination, fantasy, some kind of disruptiveness, maybe. And your humor, you have a, 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 a kind of humor in the art, which I find very impressive. So is this a kind of, uh, does it puts you back in life? What are you doing? <laughs> um, actually, um, things haven't changed, yeah? Um, uh, it's, it's still, I still have the same brain, you know? Um, it's still the same thinking, it's choreographic thinking except that it has been invited into other contexts now, which is very interesting. So I feel not that I have crossed over, but um, that I am more like an ambassador, you know, for our practice. I see choreography. I'm not a sound technician, though. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but thank you very much. It's, um, but I, I still am, first and foremost, a choreographer who presents work in other contexts. Yeah. Or I'm an artist who works in the medium court. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> this uh, question might, might seem a bit stupid in your, in your reception, because for, for you it's so self-evident. But I would, I would be wondering, if you, if you would give it like only three sentences or you would bring it to the point, what is the main difference between working with a company and a stage for a performance which takes place one night and the other way, as you did it now, within a museum where you work with other pieces of art, not with so many people and a very different constellation, but if you would have to bring it to the point, what is the main difference between these two modes of working? Um, I would say that in the museum context, it is now seems to be um, self-evident that one speaks about work and its relationship to other work. It seems to be normal. You give tours every day through the museum, explaining connections, correspondences, um, I have been heavily criticized, for example, in America, which has a very strong anti-intellectual tradition right now, or its resurgence, um, for even daring to publish an essay in a program. God forbid you should explain anything, everything should be, anything that can't explain itself is of no value. Yeah? Whereas I find in the visual arts, Everyone is very interested in how things work, how people are thinking. You have to actually explain your thinking here. And I like that very much. I like that if you're if demanded, you can stand behind the work and you have to, it's like science. You peer review, you know. There is a discussion and I think that it's very healthy and it makes you think very well and I really appreciate kind of discussion that emerges from this context very, very much. Yeah. Yeah, so, go. <laughs> um, it's also much less stressful than, than dance. Um, in dance, you, you never know how the performance will go. You never know. It could go like this or like that. Here, it sort of, at least, it's, it starts okay. <laughs> <laughs> we hope. Bill, yes. do you enjoy the fact do you enjoy the fact that your work is now becoming permanent, even eternal, maybe? Um, actually, I think that's an illusion, yeah? Um, that does, the, uh, the work is um, becoming more permanent because in this case, these works are not owned by anybody, they don't live anywhere, they don't have a home. So they go back into a lager. <laughs> so um, right now, uh, they are a lot like dances still. They are a lot like dances insofar as they are here now, and then they're gone. <laughs> Not all. <laughs> Not all. <laughs> Most. <laughs> Maybe some will stay in Frankfurt. <laughs> 
Bill, um, in your praxis, do you see, as we observe, there is a lot about instruction, but do you see yourself in your praxis as an instructor or uh, a therapist, or both sometimes? Like some sort. Yeah, you see in your art praxis, yes. now involving all these works that is a lot about instructions and also involve a reflection of the individual to the relation to the audience, the receptor, uh, you see yourself as instructor or more as a therapist or both? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm very happy if, if people come away with an idea not about me, because the purpose of this exhibition was to say that choreographic thinking was perhaps tacitly exercised by other artists. Yeah, ideas of, of rhythm, as far as I'm concerned, or um, as soon as you're structuring rhythm in time, you're already starting to correspond to choreography. It could be visual rhythm, because what is a choreographer doing? He's establishing visual, uh, she, he, a visual rhythm on some level. And I think, for example, curatorial practice in terms of setting up a museum show is entirely like a choreography. It's, in, it's very similar, it's the same kind of editing, uh, except that what's unberechenbar is, what's unpredictable is how it will be uh, parsed, how the time will be used by the spectator. And um, I think that I'm very happy to open up, if possible, a new category of reflection about art practice that already is there and going, this is choreographic as far as I'm concerned. But then I want to not make the definition so fixed. Yeah? And people contemplate, okay, how malleable, how, how uh, adaptable is this term choreography? Because choreography has now been taken away from the stage. It's no longer considered something that applies only to theatrical work, for example, yeah, or dancerly work. Choreography and dance are very different practices because I have done both, yeah. <laughs> um, during this parkour, we saw uh, the use of signs in dance and uh, I want to know uh, how do you see dance in the future um, with the development in science and technology? Yeah. Um, I think, okay, for example, I'm working in California right now at a research, um, at a, at a research university. And I think the, I'm um, having that trouble again. It's, it's, it's the NSA, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, yeah. Um, uh, do you remember Star Trek? Star Trek, they had the holodeck, you know, and you could, they're working on, on virtual worlds very, very much, especially in California. Um, and huge government money is going into developing holographic technology and now all of um, the big cinema industry is working on um, virtual reality. Um, so I think that choreographic, um, a, a choreographic perspective is going to be very, very welcome uh, in the future, but not necessarily on the stage. I think there are dwindling resources, so, so diminishing resources for the old, technology of theater. It was a wonderful technology at, at, the, at its time. It was the, the virtual reality of its moment, yeah. But I believe that things are, are slowly developing in another direction, and I think there will be very interesting opportunities for people who are thinking choreographically, but not necessarily thinking within the genre specifically of traditional choreography, yeah. <coughs> I mean, I, there are a number of choreographers who are also working in the visual arts also. So I think it's, there's 
more and more dialogue between the choreography and other domains right now. Good future for you all. <laughs> uh, question? Uh, so, um, what is your relation to music, uh, to sounds? Is it something which is really necessary or um, essential in your work and for choreography? Uh, how do you choose your song? We didn't talk about the <coughs> sound. Albums. We forgot that. That's okay. Um, um, uh, well, the, the pendulum, that is ein, ein Musikstück. It's a music composition. Um, with my own group here in Frankfurt, I would say the last 10 years, we focused primarily on making musical compositions that looked like choreography. And um, I think that we discovered that music doesn't only sound like something, yeah? For, and choreography doesn't only look like something. So um, that was, I think, one of the most interesting things about what we did. I'm talking to my colleagues who did it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> to get their confirmation. But one of the most interesting things we did was to think not choreographically, but to think compositionally as you would in making music compositions versus making dance compositions. Yeah. We worried more what compositions sounded like than what they looked like on some occasions. Yeah. We are done. Okay. Thank you so much for your coming. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. <laughs>